Hey folks, this is Jake Davis with a wrestling recap for you. And this morning we're going to talk about WWE Fastlane 2021 held last night from the truck from the Thunderdome in Tropicana Field. This is the last pay-per-view before WrestleMania three weeks from now. So uh, let's get into what happened. The opening bout was for the women's WWE Women's Tag Team Championship. Nia Jax and Shannon ba Baszler with Reginald in their corner. Cute as a button. And they're taking on the SmackDown Women's Champion, Sasha Banks, and the Royal Rumble winner, Bianca Belair. This is actually a rematch from Elimination Chamber, and I'll honestly, pretty much the exact same match. Bianca and Sasha kind of work together, but they don't. Uh, Nia and Shayna eventually get a win. The, the, the finish comes when uh, Reginald tries to get in, interfered, tries to interfere, he gets laid out. Uh, Sasha pokes uh, Baszler in the bank statement, but uh, Nia Jax pushes Bianca onto them, breaking it up. Uh, then while the two faces are arguing, Shanna Baszler schoolboys Sasha Banks, and they retain the titles. After the match, Bianca and Sasha argue. Sasha slaps Bianca before walking away, and the segment ends with Bianca pulling, pulling to the WrestleMania sign. Uh, I mean, they did the exact same thing last month at Elimination Chamber. They've pretty much done the same thing every week on SmackDown. This was a match I was actually looking forward to, and now it's, I mean, as far as Sasha and, and Bianca goes, but, God, I just, can they feud now? I mean, just enough with the tag team things, uh, uh, a bitter, uh, friendly rivalry between baby faces. Sasha needs to turn heel for this. She needs to go full-fledged turn heel. Up next is for the Intercontinental Championship. Big E defends against Apollo Crews. Uh, again, you know, we've seen this match so many times on SmackDown the last few months. Uh, and I, uh, on, at first, was kind of intrigued by Apollo's new heel turn. I uh, thought it was interesting, something different. And then we started doing the silly accent. It's just like, oh, man, what's going on here? And then Big E's cutting these, you know, heavy breathing, almost whiny, nasally promos. And it's just, just so cringy. It's all just so awful. These, these two really big, muscular, tough guys. And I just, they both just sound so terrible. <laughs> uh, it's, it, Big E's definitely dominant. Dominant in this match, but Apollo's able to get some momentum. He goes for kind of a roll up, but... Big E reverses the momentum, hooks the leg, and I'm a, actually, it's a terrible cradle. It looks like all four shoulders are down. But uh, Big E retains the title, and after the match, Apollo beats him down again, and this segment ends with Apollo literally standing on Big E's face. And I'm like, this is your champion! This is your champion! But sounding like he's fucking from Wakanda. <coughs> it was not, not a good match. It just really wasn't. I did not enjoy this match, and the... Uh, match package before it just didn't help matters. It just, I mean, just not feeling it here. We go to this backstage segment <coughs> of pre-recorded. It's actually it's more just a fucking uh, Old Spice commercial. And a guy named, I shit you not, Joseph Average is sitting there selling deodorant. Uh, and our truth is hiding behind his display case. The character Zawa comes looking for truth. They get into a, a fucking Looney Tunes fight. Uh, trying while well, trying to clean up all the spilled deodorant, a Joseph Average accidentally pills, accidentally pins. Uh, truth, truth rolls. You know, school boys and rolls him up to get the title right back. This whole thing was just fucking painful. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> if they were going to be this stupid, I would really think it would have been funnier if Joseph Average would have been the champion for like the next two weeks, coming out on Raw. I'd like, you know, I'm all just go, go, you know, gee whiz, shucky darn, all golly, that kind of stuff, you know. Here's me, just old Joe Average. And, you know, true, so I'm going after you, Average Joe. It, just, it could have been a funnier thing, or, or hear me out. Just could not have done any of this. Anyhow. Up next is scheduled to be uh, Shane McMahon versus Braun Strowman. Because, you know, why not? After Strowman's been, uh, Shane McMahon's been humiliating and bullying and assaulting Braun Strowman for the last few weeks. Basically doing the exact same storyline he had with the big show back in 2000. Uh, 
Braun Strowman's coming off in this whole thing really looking like a whiny little bitch. I mean, a man his size walking around, I want an apology because you could be stupid. Really? This is what we're doing to Braun Strowman now? And uh, it was awful. So Elias is talking to Shane. Shane makes Elias take his place in the match, claiming, oh, I, I hurt my knee uh, training earlier today. So, of course, Elias just gets squashed by Strowman. Uh, they totally missed a chance to have Strowman squash Jackson Riker, Jackson Riker, the former gunner in TNA. He's out there. He's in uh, Elias's corner. He's his, his, a disciple lately. And it's just, uh, they missed the opportunity for him to take, you know, get hit with the bulldozer uh, steam train that Strowman does, follow it up with the power slam, then go to the back. Uh, I mean, this isn't a feud I even care about. And to build it up this way at a pay-per-view was just bad, 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 bad. We cut to uh, a recap of what happened to on the pre-show with uh, Matt Riddle defending the U.S. title against Mustafa Ali. Ali uh, was, uh, Riddle retained the belt, and after the match was uh, and after the match, uh, Ali's uh, he'll be rating Retribution once again. They turn their back on him. The two big guys choke slam him, and Retribution is over. So after a nine-month run, they beat no one, won nothing. Nobody got over, and I would even argue it stifled the careers of most of the people involved, particularly me again and Dominic Dijakovic. Uh, I mean, damn, man. This was a waste of everyone's time. Retribution. Um, up next is a grudge match. Seth Rollins versus Shinsuke Nakamura. It's not that much of a grudge match because the real story here is between Rollins and Cesaro. Rollins felt has been here ever since he came back. Felt Cesaro has disrespected him. Um, uh, he swung him around twenty times. Uh, he jumped Cesaro a few weeks ago. Curb stomped him a few times. Cesaro can't work this week. Uh, Shinsuke's old buddies with him, former tag team partner, so he's gonna fight in for, for Cesaro's honor. This was the first great thing on the show. Really, really good match. Even though uh, yeah, I did get a little sick of uh, Rollins sitting there yelling for Cesaro's name while he's like choking Shinsuke up against the ropes and stuff like that. You know, in there with uh, a former world champion. You know, treat this guy with respect. Um, uh, ultimately, lots of uh, uh, close calls, near falls, um, uh, really well teasing the Bombaye or the Kinshasa all throughout the match. Never hits it. But eventually, um, uh, uh, Seth hits a lightning quick curb stomp out of damn near nowhere and uh, wins the match. Good match. Good match. Up next is no holds barred. You know, I'm just going to pause this real quick. I'm going to break my own rule. <laughs> 